back to the YouTube channel. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana Baby. And I'm back again with another mind-blowing and eye-opening episode. If you see me this excited, it's because people are solving my problem for me. I have been telling you that Africa just need one thing. That is industrial revolution. It's time for us to make things in Africa and this is what SPS is doing and that is why I'm here. If today's your first time seeing this face on your screen, my name is Mr. Ghana Baby, the one and only annoying YouTuber in Africa. Do me a favor, like the video, subscribe and be part of this awesome family. But you know how I always do it? When I get to a manufacturing plant like this, I just don't go to the factory. I go and find out who is the man behind it? Because most of you don't believe that Africans own staffs on the continent. And I am here to prove you wrong. Come with me. Let's go meet the founder and the CEO of SPS. Come with me. Yeah. Daddy, it's such a honor to meet you. Okay. I mean, you've done something incredible that I think so many Ghanaians don't even know who you are. Yes. People are saying we cannot make it in Africa, mm. but you managed to build Ghana's first and the biggest solar panel manufacturing company mm. in Ghana, yeah. not anywhere. Yes. They said we can't make it, but you managed to do this. How did you manage to do this? Um, it's a very interesting question you've asked, mm -hmm. but uh, I want to trace this back to how I was raised, you know, certain values that I got from my parents. Um, but one thing that my parents taught me was responsibility. And growing up, that became, you know, uh, my inspiration that in fact, my mother would tell me sometimes that look, look around Brukum. By the way, I'm from Brukum, the Bra and in the Bono region. Bono. It used to be Brown, okay. but it's now Bono. He said, go around and see the sort of development out there. And these, these, these were developments that were, uh, that had been put up by uh, farmers you know, cocoa farmers and that kind of thing. So going through life, I felt I should be able to accomplish something uh, that will stand the test of time. Mm -hmm. So the, I use responsibility as being my guide. So throughout my life, though, I went to school, you know, but, you know, I didn't study the way I would have <laughs> loved to study, you know, but um, I wasn't in any way bothered by that because it so happened that I also turned out to be a faith person. And therefore I started relying so much on the word of God that encouraged me, you know, that no matter whatever you are, God is no respecter of persons and that whatever you desire to do, you just have to believe in it and, and then you will get it. So that actually led the way. It's incredible. Yeah. My name is Wadamaya. Okay. Uh, I'm from Takradi. Our audience watching us right, I don't know who you are. Okay. Can you please tell us your name? And yeah, you've already told us that you're from Bono, but yeah. you can still tell us your name. Oh, my name is Francis Okoma Boating. Uh, born to, uh, you know, a paramount chief then, uh, who later became the first president of uh, Bonham for Hassel Chiefs. Yes. At any time, any point in time in Ghana that I decided that I'm tired of Ghana, I want to leave Ghana and then leave the country, or you were based here? I never ever thought about that. Leaving Ghana to go and live in somebody else's land was something far from the equation. Far, 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 far from the equation. For some reason, I remember when I got married, and my mother-in-law said to me, 
Oh, Kamara, I think you have to consider, you know, traveling because, you know, that time most people were traveling. People who felt they couldn't make it here in this country were leaving the country. And I said that I can see a lot of opportunities around me and therefore I didn't see the need to travel to live outside Ghana, you know. So I simply pursued my goals and here we are today. Daddy, I know we are here to talk about SPS, hmm. but apart from SPS, you know, like I just wanted to know, this is just a simple question that I want to, like how many, can you give me a random number, how many companies have you already established in this country, Ghana? Even you never left, but you are here. How many companies, apart from SPS, do you ever establish any other company? Not even the name, but how many companies have you established? Uh, seriously, uh, SPS was born out of a mother company. And uh, there are other four subsidiaries. But, uh, you know, somehow, some way, <laughs> uh, it, it sometimes it becomes a bit challenging, you know, wow. uh, in the kind of society that we find ourselves in. Uh, you always have to make sure that uh, you are not too much known, you know. And uh, in fact, that has been part of my my strategy, you know, <laughs> not to expose myself too much out there you know don't talk too much you know but spend more time to listen and to identify what opportunities are out there but i just want to know yeah why solar panels not any other thing your question is why did i why, why you decided to, to to produce solar panels well it, it's one of the things that comes as a vision uh, and I remember I lost my dad, you know, in 2003. I had to travel, you know, dead at night to my hometown, Brikum, which is about 250 miles away from Accra. Uh, you know that uh, there are a lot of these uh, checkpoints, you know, barriers and things like that. I almost hit one of them. So that infuriated me in a way. <laughs> and I said, ah, but why can't we have lies around you know then i remember that the national grid cannot be extended to those areas so the concept of solar energy renewable energy came to mind so that is how it started so i decided to pursue it but one thing with me is that i think about lives you know think about lives i just wanted to make sure that people in the rural areas do benefit from such a, a project. So that brought this into mind that I would need some kind of a sponsor, you know, seeking for sponsorship. And uh, fortunately, you know, Cuckoo Board came out with a similar concept. And so it was like we started introducing solar street lights you know to the cocoa growing communities and the uh, uh, share not catchment areas in the north okay so when i started and i was going to china i started looking at the way they were doing their things there that's oh these panels the panels which forms the is, is the biggest component of having to put the lights, you know, together. So, so it would be a good idea if we can just produce them locally, you know. It, it took me a little bit of time, wow. did a little bit of research on that, met someone in Germany, and then that later led me to Japan. And the rest, as I've already said, is history. The CEO of SPS. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure man. to meet you. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you too, Wadamai. Your dad is telling me that you are the one who is taking care of the company right now. Well, Wadamai, I'll say I'm doing my best. I'm trying my best, you know, to, to live up to the big shoes that's been given to me. What is your name? Um, I am Ofori Boatin. 
Foi uh, Watson. Yeah. For Watson, you sounding like American. I'm a Foy Watson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you based in America before? Well, yes, yes, I did. Um, a good majority of my schooling was in America. Mm. And even, you know, my middle school and high school. Um, and a lot of my upbringing, um, I always tell people that I partially was raised in both Ghana and America. Uh, because I did spend up to when I was 10 years old in Ghana and then eventually um, opportunity came that moved us you know to the States mm -hmm. and I spent pretty much all the rest of my life there. You know what I want you to do for me? <laughs> sure. You need to tell, tell me. me all we need to know about SPS. <laughs> all right. Listen, SPS, simply put, provides products designed for Africa, made in Ghana. And SPS is by far trying to push itself into the arena of being one of um, the product developers within electronics. So one of the first things that we started with is producing solar panels here. We started producing solar panels back in 2011. Whoa, you're producing solar panel, I mean locally made. Locally made here in Ghana. It should be the first manufacturing plant in Ghana. Yes, it is. Um, we've been out in the market for quite some time. Obviously, we did not start just by our producing panels. We started off by, you know, importing them and kind of developing the market. And we saw the opportunity that in order for any African uh, company to be able to live up to its hopes, it needs to have its own product. Amazing. You know, and in the products needs to be designed for Africa because Africa is such a wonderful place and our circumstances are different. So you can't take what is in Europe or what is in, 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 Asia. in Asia or North America and say that you're pushing it to Africa. We don't want that anymore. We want tailor-made. Hey, so the solar panels in here are locally made by Ghanaians. Exactly. This is incredible. You know why I'm excited today? I don't because know, tell we me. We have a solar panel plant in Ghana. <laughs> yes, we so do. which means that you guys are adding value to the country. All I want to know is like how many projects can SPS boast of? Oh man, so many. Um, the few that I've listed, the Jubilee House the seat of government for Ghana, Ecobank, uh, Ghana. Um, at their branches, mm. even Ministry of Education, they came, you know, they put out a project which was to put the computer labs onto solar, especially in the rural areas, some places really don't have power. But kids nowadays, everybody is digital, you know, and everybody needs a computer and needs to be able to have access to the internet. So we were glad to help in that project. It was subcontracted to us and um, that, that was amazing. And most of all, the other one that I love is being able to use a solo solution to provide water, simple water. There's a borehole project that we've done and it covers pretty much all the regions. We've done close to about a thousand boreholes. You could just Whoa. imagine. I mean like borehole that use solar? Yes. That's perfect. But why are you guys using air conditioning yet? Are they powered by solar too? <laughs> so, <laughs> so these air conditions are inverter air conditions and we have a solution also for air conditions. We have the conventional air conditions and we have the um, solar air conditions and they all work just virtually the same. You know, I was just kidding. Yeah, I never <laughs> Do we have something we call solar air conditions? Yes, we do. We do. We do. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So where are you taking me to now? All right, so it's an honor that you're here. Mm -hmm. And I thought that once you're here, you got to see this. Because every time anybody sees this, they gape. And I'm sure, you know, just to kind of allure you so that nothing happens to you, we're taking a walk into our ultra-fitted factory where we produce the solar panels here in Ghana. So, like I said earlier, it's des designed for Africa, but made in Ghana. Oh. And let's step in here and let me show you a couple things, yeah? Whoa! Yeah, welcome to the factory. Uh, this, this is, is SPS. huge! Yes, yes, I mean, thank you. I mean, there's been a 
long way coming and it's been hard work to even put together something like this. Um, you know, in this field is very, very important for us to be at our best and also provide one of the highest quality. You know, like I was outside, yeah. so me coming inside here, like I'm kind of blown away. Exactly. That's actually just a simple question. Yeah. I want to know what is the worth of this factory? You know, in putting the entire factory together plus our supply chain and logistics and everything is about $50 million. And um, it hasn't, well, we're still working on even adding more to it. We realize that the demand uh, within the country and also within the neighboring countries are increasing. Um, and we've actually expanded the factory from 32 megawatts to about 165. We hope that come next year, we'll be able to finish up with the expansion. Don't tell me you, this is what you manufacture in here. Yes, it is, it is. So th this panel, it's about 72 cells um, and they were all produced right here in Ghana. And this panel is normally used for the larger type of projects. Um, and then, you know, these are a little bit smaller in case you, they're smaller projects. Maybe you want your pump or something like that, you know, to be powered by solar. Or maybe you want a street light or so. Then we find ways and means to kind of cut it to suit the purpose um, that the project is for. How, how many watts do you people produce in a day? <laughs> All right, so the entire factory's capacity at, at the moment is at 32 megawatts. Okay. And we're in an expansion uh, uh, period. With the 32 megawatts, we get a little bit of over 165,000 of these panels yearly. Um, if you do the math and you kind of back it up, it's almost about maybe 100 to about 200 daily. See, this factory also is fully air conditioned mm. because uh, for us to be considered a world-class factory, uh, we have to test our panels at below 25 degrees Celsius. And part of the production line also requires uh, us to control the temperature and the humidity in the factory. Okay? So the factory is fully air conditioned. We always maintain the temperature below 25 degrees Celsius. And um, again, it's relatively clean because we want to make sure as we make the panels, we don't have any dirt or dust that goes inside the cells and, and short, short circuits the cells. I know I came here at the wrong time because I'm not seeing anybody in here. Is it because the company is upgrading or something? Yes, yes. We're actually in the process of upgrading the factory. And also we've got a new equipment set that is better technology, can do a whole lot more than the current equipment set. So we actually transitioning from the old equipment set to the new equipment set. And the new equipment set also gives us about five times the production capacity as the old one. So glad you gave me the chance to speak to you. Mm -hmm. um, we have so many young Africans watching us right now. Yes. If you have a message for young Africans living in Africa right now, mm -hmm. um, I mean, so many of us get tired of this continent. We think that, okay, we can't make it. We want to leave. If you have a message yeah. to tell us, what would that message be? The message will simply be, don't give up. You know, I mean, um, just work hard to identify what you can do, to identify your opportunities. And when you have been able to lay your hands on something that you think you can do, just go out, all out, and make sure that, you know, by deed of hard work and honesty, you will get there. If you, that if you had a chance to change something mm. in Africa, mm -hmm. what would it be? Uh, in Africa, can I generalize it? I don't think so. But okay. specifically here in Ghana, you know, because you, you, you have to make sure that, you know, wherever you are, the place that, that you stay, uh, you know, uh, feels better, you know, than, uh, you know, uh, anywhere else, you know, before you can just step out there. But what uh, I see in this country is that the opportunities are there, you know, but is the system that is the problem. And when I talk about the system, what am I referring to? 
Now it looks like politics seems to be taking over everything. So young men who hitherto can sit down and reflect on what to do for their living, you know, you find, you find these young men involved in politics. And to me, I don't know, you know, for how long this is going to go on. But if we have our, take for instance, recently during the primaries, yeah. I was a bit worried. You know, you had candidates aging from 30 years to 33 years. And to me, I felt, you know, uh, it, it was, it was, it was a bit worrisome because um, I, I was personally worried about that because I know that such people do not have the, the requisite, you know, experience to govern. You understand? Uh, why am I saying this? I've been there before. I've been 30 years. I've been 33 years. Now I'm 71 years. So there's a host of experience that I have. Okay. And I look at these guys and I say, what sort of experience, what, what sort of knowledge are they going to, to, to share in Parliament? You see, most of them haven't had any exposure, maybe straight from university, they get into politics. I don't know what drives them into politics, but it's something that I think uh, we really have to be very careful with the way we are encouraging our youth to get into politics. Uh, at what age do you think that someone is qualified to be involved? It's, that's a very good question. It's not so much about the age, not so much about the age, but uh, I'm talking about exposure. exposure. You understand? Exactly. I mean, I, I, I this is what I believe, yeah. that every, every, person who wants to do politics must have. You, 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 shouldn't, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't only be exposed to what is in your country. Go elsewhere, find out how things are done. Uh, level it up with how things are done in your, in your, in your own country. And then try to see it. Something will come up that will be useful for your country. Wow. Now I get your point. And you understand what yeah, I'm saying? Exactly. So, the other issue too is um, our land tenure is something that does not help people like us who are generational thinkers, you know, to be very much interested in, you know, doing meaningful investment in this country. You know, why am I saying this? How can you, you, you know the cost of land, yeah. very expensive. Yeah. Here in this country, you know, you want a decent land for a project, you need about a million US dollars. To do that, you you yes. want about two acres of land, you know that that is the sort of money you have to be looking at. Meanwhile, that amount can even build you the, the factory. You understand? Mm. And not only that, but then the lease on it. Sometimes you have certain leases, you know, going for uh, uh, thirty years and fifty years. Something that you bear witness to during your lifetime. It doesn't make sense to me. So if you are thinking about the future, it becomes a bit challenging to take that route. Do you believe Africa is the future? Yeah, why not? Because we, we seem to have everything here, but the way we manage our affairs is, is key. It's key. Wow. So I say thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you.